All right, all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the iSpring Solutions webinar series, where every week we talk about e-learning trends, share iSpring tips and tricks, and cover clients' cases. I'm Paulina Ionina, the Community Manager at iSpring, and I'll be the moderator for today's webinar, where we will be sharing 30 plus tips for creating better video lecture. And as a presenter, I have invited an awesome person, just wait for it. <laughs> so Miguel Hernandez is an online instructor with 34,000 students and the founder of Grumo Media. Hi Miguel, thanks a lot for tuning in. How are you doing today? Very good, uh, pleasure to be here in Vancouver, Canada. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So in today's uh, webinar, I'm going to share a lot of the tips that I've learned over the last 10 years teaching online. So like Paulina said, I, I have many students. I teach on a platform called Udemy, another platform called Skillshare. And I also create YouTube videos where I help people monetize their knowledge and become better online educators. And one of the things that are critical to be able to teach online is to look good on camera and to be able to know how to create lectures that look good and professional. And now that unfortunately many of us are stuck at home, it's almost a requirement that we learn the technical skills to make sure that we look good on camera. Uh, so it's it takes a little bit of practice. And in this lecture, I'm gonna cover actually 39 tips. Some of them I'm sure are gonna be obvious to you and some of them are going to be maybe make a, a, a difference. My goal for this lecture is that at the very end of it, at least you have at least two to five tips that you've never implemented that will help take your online lectures and presentations to the next level. So they look more professional and so that, you, so that you're happy with the end result. And at the end, I'm going to share a checklist with the 39 recommendations. So next time you do a video, you can go over the 39 tips and, and recommendations and make sure that all of them are there. Because if you meet all the requirements, these 39 tips, I can guarantee you, you're going to have an awesome online lecture. Your videos or courses or presentations are going to look, uh, look fantastic. Okay. And the, the, um, the tips are divided into four sections, which I think are the fundamental things you have to look when you want to create an online presentation or lecture. One is the video quality, then is the audio quality, then is the studio where you're recording, and finally your delivery, your ability to explain yourself and make sure that everything is understood. Once you are good at these four things, your lecture should look fantastic, all right? It could be overwhelming at the beginning to be able to implement them all, so what I would recommend is that you focus on two or three different tips every time you create a video. Right, so maybe on, on your first lecture, you start focusing on improving the quality of your video, then you focus on the audio, then you make sure that your studio looks good. Like my studio, I just redid uh, for, uh, like six months ago. It took me a long time to make sure that it was good, that I could adjust the light settings and all of that, but I'm very happy with it. And finally, make sure that when you're explaining yourself that people listen, that you're engaging. Once you cover these four areas, you're going to be good to go to teach online and to share your knowledge with the world, all right? Uh, at the, uh, while I'm uh, sharing these tips, uh, you can ask any questions and then we'll have a, a Q&A section where I can address any questions about equipment or about tips or whatever you want, all right? So let's start with video, okay? So the first tip on video is make sure your video is shot in widescreen mode. And specifically, if you're teaching, uh, if you wanna share your videos on YouTube, if you want to share your videos on any online course platform, the format, the official format is 16 by nine. Now this is by default how all cameras shoot. Uh, uh, I, uh, smartphones also shoot in 16 by nine as well. And the reason why this is crucial is because if you don't shoot in this white format, uh, you're going to get black bars and that doesn't look good. All right. Uh, also, 
when you're creating, let's say, a keynote presentation or a PowerPoint presentation, usually you have two different formats. You have the four by three, which is kind of a square, and you have the 16 by nine, which is more, uh, which is wider. Always choose the 16 by nine or the wider format to make sure you don't get black lines on the sides of your video, okay? I see, uh, like, I, uh, like Paulina said, I have thousands of students and I ask them to send me uh, test lectures so I can review them and give them feedback. And I see this mistake made continuously uh, and they get these black bars. And I'm like, please uh, make sure you shoot on white format. By the way, all these tips are mistakes that I've made before or mistakes that I see regularly made by my students. And uh, I'm sure that some of them are going to apply to you. Uh, then the second tip is make sure your video is in high definition, uh, which now it's almost a given. All cameras that are less than five years old are going to shoot in high definition. High definition just means that the actual pixels is going to be 1080 or higher. Now, uh, a format that is becoming very popular is 4K. 4K mean, is double the resolution of 1080p, but I just want to make sure that when you have an option to shoot, you're shooting in high definition. Uh, all right, so next one. This one, <laughs> it seems obvious, but like I say, I see so many of my students that they're like, why does my video look blurry? And this may not and people are like, no, so I have a great camera and I have a, a great setting and lighting, but it looks blurry. A lot of people forget to clean their lens before shooting. And then you start getting this kind of like blurry effect. And it's because they haven't cleaned the lens. So before you ever shoot, make sure you clean your camera lens. All right. Uh, another tip. Uh, make sure the video fills the entire frame and there are not black bars around the video. Okay, so this is when you're editing your video. Okay, so let's say you shot your video, it's white format. Okay, that's perfect. You're like, okay, I shouldn't get any black bars. The problem is, is that in most editing software, you can adjust the size of your video and a lot of my students, they resize it or i don't know what they do that it doesn't fit the entire canvas of their video and they get black bars right uh, so make sure and in this case uh, the software that you're used to seeing here is called screenflow it's for mac but you can you do, you do this in uh, imovie and in camtasia and in after effects whichever video editing software you use make sure that when you import that video into your project that the video takes the entire canvas Otherwise, you're going to get black bars. Again, this is a mistake I've seen continuously happen, right? Um, all right, another tip. The video is not shaky, okay? Make sure you're always using a tripod if possible. Another mistake I see is people, they, most people use tripods, but this is some mistake I see a lot when people are uh, giving a lecture, is that the camera is not secured properly and sometimes they will hit the table or and then you get some weird shakiness and it's because the camera is not secured properly all right so make sure the video is not shaky make sure that the face is centered is uh, inside uh, inside the frame so right now i don't know if you can see my in my video but i try to always make sure that my uh, face is right in the center you have to always be aware of how you frame in the video right uh, so that's one. The only reason why you would not center your face on the screen is if you want to put some text on the sides. Uh, another tip on framing your video, make sure your eyes, let me play this back, is your eyes, so it looks good and proportionate, should be a third from the top. So right now in this uh, example, the, the eyes are too low, here they're too high, and here are one third from the top of the frame, right? And ideally you should have a little bit of what they call headroom. So right on top of your head, there should be a little bit of a gap uh, and that will look more professional. If you look at all the professional video shot on TV news, on, on in movies, this would be like a medium shot and you always see this kind of proportions, right? And you can see, and if you decide to zoom, make sure that the eyes are kept. So here I'm zooming, they are kept at one third from the top. So this would be the traditional shot. 
And this, if you go for a close-up, make sure that the eyes are at there from the top. Okay. All right. So another one. Another mistake I see a lot being made is people put the camera either too low or too high. Right? If you're going to put it anywhere, make sure it's higher because this looks more flattering than if you put it low. Right? Your eye, your camera ideally should be at eye level. Right? So when you're setting up your tripod or your camera, make sure that the camera is at eye level and it will look the most natural. Otherwise, it looks like you're looking down on your on your students, and it, this way it looks like you're looking up, which is unnatural. Right? Okay. Another tip. Another mistake I see is uh, when people are shooting video is that their their face is not uh, illuminated properly. In other words, everything else is there has more light than their face. You want to make sure that the part where you want to draw attention has the most light, right? So in this case, in my desk, I have two lights that are pointing on my face. I want to make sure the background of my uh, uh, of my video is always darker than the front of the video. Another mistake I see a lot is with cameras that have manual focus is that if you don't have the settings correct, the camera may focus on the wrong part. So before you start recording, make sure that the camera is focusing on your face. Okay, these are things that seem very obvious, but when you, when you start, you'll be like, what, what's wrong with it? He's like, okay, well, my camera is not in focus. So if you have a camera like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or something with detachable lenses that is more advanced type of camera, you can always go to settings. And most cameras have a mode which is for, uh, face tracking. So if you're going to shoot a talking head video, go to your camera settings and make sure that you have face tracking on. That way, always your face will be in focus whether you go move backwards or forwards in your video. Right. If you keep it in manual focus and you move back and forth, you're going to come in or out of focus. So ideally, you use a camera that has a, a, a track. A, they, they can track your face. Right. Now, if you're using a cheap webcam, everything is on focus. It doesn't look as professional. Like I'm using a webcam right now. Uh, everything is going to always show, show up in focus. But if you want to look more professional, and you want to use a more expensive camera, make sure that you're using a face tracking mode. OK. Uh, okay, this is a more a more technical aspect for people that are using more advanced cameras. Is all professional cameras they uh, they have a setting which is called white balancing, and all that means is that the camera, although it's quite smart, it doesn't know what white really is, the color white, and this is called white balancing, where you teach the camera what white is, and you can read this online, but basically what you're going to do is uh, you're gonna put a white surface in front of your camera and then you're gonna click a button that says, this is white. That way, your whites are gonna always turn out uh, the right color, right? And, and this is my camera, I'm using a Canon 70D. We're gonna talk more about cameras later. Uh, and if you have any specific questions about which cameras to get, you can ask me. Uh, but most cameras have a setting uh, that allows you to select uh, the, the white balance. Uh, and the reason, the main reason why you want this is because, for example, if you're not have the right white balance, maybe you're going to see that your video turns kind of bluish or yellowish. If you see this, that means that you have not selected the correct white balance for your camera. Okay. The ideal one looks more natural. Again, a mistake I see all the time happening. Uh, another one is the exposure. Uh, most uh, cameras uh, have a, what they call the exposure level. The exposure is just how much light do you allow to go into the sensor, right? Uh, if the if the if the exposure is not set properly uh, and the light levels in your in your uh, office change, uh, the exposure is going to change and you're going to get this kind of effect. Let me show you. So in this in this clip, I'm I'm changing the intensity of my main light. And you can see how uh, the camera is trying to adjust for it, and it creates a weird. Uh, it's not. It's not even, right? So what you want to do is make sure that you set your camera to manual mode, or in if you have an iPhone, uh, you can also 
click on the face and hold your finger until you see what it, it says basically uh, a, a lock icon. And that's going to make sure that the exposure is fixed. So it doesn't matter what happens in terms of lighting, you're always going to be ex uh, exposed properly. Okay. Uh, so that's another tip. All right. Uh, okay. 13. The background is darker than, okay. So this is also a typical mistake that I see a lot. And you can see here that the background is too uh, overexposed. And this could usually happen if you're shooting with a window behind you. And then what happens is that uh, your face either looks too dark or people are distracted because of the background surrounding you is too bright. Okay, so a trick to avoid is to make sure you're not shooting with a window behind you or that if you have lights that they're pointing more to your, towards your face than the background, right? Here, I'm more separated from the background as you can see, okay? All right, and that's all the tips for uh, video. Obviously, there's many other things you can focus on, but I think those uh, 13 tips are everything that you need to do to start uh, making sure your video looks uh, professional. And if you have any questions, you can write them and we'll answer them uh, later. All right, cool. So let's do audio. Let's go with the first audio tip. All right, so this one is a also pretty straightforward, but is that when you're speaking and when you listen to your audio that it's loud and clear, but this is a very relative thing. What, what does loud and clear mean? Well, most video editing, editing software, they have a audio meter, which, which, which is going to show you the levels of your audio, and it's me measured in decibels, where zero is the maximum, the, the loudest that the, 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 the audio can get, anything over zero is going to become distorted. So you want to make sure that when you're playing back your audio, your levels, let me play this back, your levels are between zero and six, okay? Six decibels. If they're way below six decibels, what's gonna happen is that it's gonna be hard for people to hear what you're saying and they're gonna have to turn up their volume, right? So the way to do this is making sure that the levels are between zero and six. If they go over six, over zero, you're going to get this uh, peaking, what they call, and this, the audio sounds distorted. So this is, you don't want that, right? You want to make sure it's there. Now, all video editing softwares allow you to adjust the level of your audio, all right? So it depends on what you're using. You can raise it or lower it to make sure it's between zero and six decibels, okay? And another thing is when you're recording also, a, a lot of cameras allow you to set the input levels and you can already see whether they're peaking or not and then you can adjust them also in, in your video editing software. All right, another one that's uh, a big recommendation is if possible, always use an external microphone. A lot of cameras come with their own microphones. Uh, most computers have their own internal microphone. Uh, all the smartphones have their microphones. The problem with these microphones is that they're not optimized to record the uh, voice professionally. So they capture all the surround sound. And specifically when you're speaking on, 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 a, on a room with echo, you pick up a lot of reverberation and echo, which doesn't sound professional. And so what I have here, I don't know if you can see my screen. Well, actually it's the same microphone that I have on this, on this slide here. It's a directional microphone. In my case, I'm using a shotgun microphone that is pointing at my face, right? At my, at my mouth. Uh, that way, I always know that the audio is going to be sharp and clear, okay? Next one. Okay, so here's me uh, using the microphone. Uh, another mistake I see a lot <laughs> is they have people have a great microphone, it's pointing at their face, but they have a lot of background sounds. They have either a fan or, or, the, or the air conditioner is on or the fridge is on, or you can see uh, hear traffic or barking dogs or the kids are running in the background, make sure that whatever environment you're shooting, recording video, uh, uh, sorry, recording video and audio in is as much uh, sound isolated as possible, all right? So if you have, if it's summer, 
you probably want a fan, uh, but that's going to make noise. So you're going to have to make sure that while you're recording, you don't have any uh, ex sounds that are distracting. All right. OK. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a technical uh, recommendation. Is uh, sometimes when you're editing video, uh, uh, video and audio, uh, you'll hear little pop sounds. And if that happens, it's because there was a cut between two clips. And when you put them together, the software created a little bit of a pop sound. Uh, if you hear these pop sounds, you can always go to your editing software and create and add a mini. Uh, I'm, I'm here. This is, in this case, just to be clear, I'm using Adobe After Effects, uh, which is a video editing tool. Um, but all video editing tools have the same thing, is that you can grab uh, the uh, the two audio tracks that you want to put together, uh, the audio pop will happen in the cut. What you want to do is to add a little transi transition. Here is going to be a crossfade transition. I, all it's going to do that is uh, is going to smooth the transition between the two clips to avoid any unwanted pop sounds. This is something that doesn't happen all the time, but I've, uh, if, like I'm saying, if you hear these pop sounds, this is a technique that you can use to avoid hearing these pop sounds. Uh, what else do we have? Audio and video are in sync. OK, so um, once you, the, the, there's two things you can do when you're recording uh, uh, lectures. You can either have the camera, uh, the, uh, the, the microphone connected directly to the camera, in which case the audio and, and video will always be synchronized. But what a lot of people do is that they, they record the audio separately. So they have more control over it, uh, and then they have to sync it. So if you're using that technique where you're recording the audio and video separately, now you're going to have to synchronize both on your video editing software. And to do that, the easiest way is making sure that you clap, right? Because the clap is going to create a spike on the audio waveform that now you can match to when your hands are clapping so here just to give you an example right the clap is that i'm aligning the clap to the moment where my hands are, are entering in contact that way here you can see that way your audio and video will always be synchronized i mean some other softwares allow you to do this there's like a tool that without auto synchronize uh, uh, video and audio uh, but the most traditional method and this is what all filmmakers use in hollywood they used to have this this uh, clapper thing the reason why they do that is because to synchronize the video and the audio right so the clapping technique all right uh so that's everything for audio if you follow these instructions your audio should be pretty good now let's talk about the studio where you're recording and now that we're so many of us stuck at home <laughs> we have to come up with you know a, a, a solutions to figure out how to create an environment that looks professional that sounds professional and all of that right so here's my tips on that uh, this was my former studio i redid it but pretty much uh, everything applies here uh, i had a dedicated space to record all my lectures okay uh, so make sure that you if you can, I mean, sometimes you won't have the luxury of having an extra room, uh, but what a lot of people do, maybe they create a corner inside their living room or their bedroom that is just specifically designed and optimized to record uh, lectures, okay? Uh, <clears throat> here's uh, how it looked. It looks a lot better now. I redid it, so it's, I'm very happy with the results. <clears throat> uh, then, if you're recording on your studio, make sure that your camera is always on a tripod or a solid surface. We talked about that. Very important. <clears throat> now, one thing about, let me just go back. <clears throat> one thing about what I like about this tripod is that it has a crank. So it allows you to crank your camera up and down. So if you're standing, it's easy to just adjust it. Uh, so a lot of the new tripods have that, that ability <clears throat> to basically crank. Uh, the height of the of the camera. So in this case, I'm in the seating configuration and I'm making sure the camera is on my eye level. <clears throat> okay, in this one, uh, again, the reason why you want your camera to be on a tripod is because you don't want people get sick watching it. You, uh, and it's all shaky, right? Uh, now, in terms of 
uh, isolation for sound, uh, there are this, uh, this solution, which is uh, getting uh, soundproof foam. Uh, you can buy it on Amazon or different websites. And all it does is you can put these panels around your walls. Uh, so you have a, a room with a lot of echo. One strategy is to put this in different places of your room to make sure that the, the audio is not, it sounds more clear and there's no echo. Here in my former room, now I've changed it. I still actually, I need to soundproof this room because there's a lot of echo. Uh, but one thing I used to do that is the cheapest solution is that you can hang a, uh, a blanket. If you hang a couple of blankets uh, around your walls, that will act as a great sound isolate, isolator and your sound will look, sound a lot more professional, okay? So that's just another technique. <clears throat> uh, another one that is obvious, make sure that your background is clean and not, not clutter. I see a lot of my students uh, shooting in their bedroom and you can see a, a, a lot of mess behind them. And uh, so again, make sure that everything in your room looks as clean as possible. Like I see some of the things are obvious. <laughs> I see them all the time. People are like, why are your pajamas hanging from the wall? You know, like, come on, please. Uh, another thing is you, if you're going to have a dedicated studio, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You can use just a simple wide background wall and then add a little bit of decoration. In my former studio, what I did is I had uh, books put on the background, uh, on, oh, sorry, on the wall, and then make, make a like, nice little uh, background. So try to be creative, don't overdo it. And in this case, I was just using existing books. I didn't even have to spend any money. I just basically Velcro them onto the wall and I had a really nice uh, backdrop for my, uh, for my videos. There you go. And another very important uh, tip is most rooms have a window the problem is they have a window is that the light levels change throughout the day. So uh, when it starts getting darker, suddenly your video starts not matching the original video that you shot in the morning. So make sure that you can control the amount of light that comes into the room. And, and ideally what you're going to always have is your windows uh, uh, completely blocked so you can control all the light with artificial lights. Otherwise, if you cannot do that or you don't have the lights, you have to make sure you always shoot around the same time of the day to make sure that if you're recording an online course, the look of your lectures matches throughout the entire course. And that restricts you to shoot between the same amount, you know, so you're shooting in the afternoon, maybe you always have to shoot between two and uh, four in the, in the afternoon to make sure the light levels are the same. All right. Okay, so in terms of lighting, the minimum that you should have is, is at least two lights. And let me show you here in this video. So in this case, I have one light that is pointing at my face. You could call that the key light, right? And it's dimmable. That means that I can adjust the levels of it. And you can buy this on Amazon as well. Now they're quite affordable. And so that one takes care of, of my, my face. Then I'm gonna switch another light. This is a side light, which this light is going to do is make sure that it fills any dark areas on one of my face, on one side of my face, right? And that with two lights, you usually can get away, right? Now, if you wanna be more professional and take it to the next level, you could have another light that creates a rim around your face. So it's a light that is pointing from the back to the front and it basically separates you from the background. And then a fourth light that illuminates the the background the the backdrop and that light could have a color now it's very typical to have a light that in the background that is different than the front so it creates more separation so even in my studio you can see i'm using a blue light and now this you know there's these smart lights are everywhere where we i can use my smartphone and select which kind of light uh, color do i want so i'm choosing blue right now uh, which uh, separates me more from the background right so that's another tip and we're on the 26th tip right now. Another thing is whatever items you're using while you're recording, make sure that they don't make noise. <laughs> so another thing I notice when I'm pay paying attention to my students uh, recording lectures is that I hear something squeaking and they're basically ruining the entire lecture because they're using a chair that squeaks, 
And it's like, where is that squeaking sound coming from? So whatever you're using, make sure you test it, that it's not making weird sounds, all right? Uh, there you go. So I'm like, that's that chair is good. <laughs> so that's everything related to the studio, okay? I hope, I hope at least one or, the, or two of these tips is useful to you. I know a lot of them are, are uh, very common sense, but if one or two of them are useful, I'm gonna be very happy, okay? The last part is delivery. And some of them, I've made the mistake myself, and some of them I've seen other people making mistakes. Uh, but again, it's all in the details. Once you add all of these up, <laughs> uh, that's how you get a professional video. Here is if you have a lot of, make sure that you look professional as much as you can. Uh, I used to make this mistake a lot, and it, it didn't hurt me at the beginning because really when I started teaching was 10 years ago and it was kind of like the beginning of online courses. So people are like, oh, wow, somebody's teaching me something, right? Uh, but then I'm like, you know, over the years, I'm trying to look better, right? Uh, and a lot of people don't pay attention to these things. Uh, and it's like, okay, make sure that your hair looks good, that you're not a mess. Uh, if, uh, if you're using a, uh, uh, whatever outfit you're using, make sure that it doesn't distract. This is another mistake I see a lot of people. They have very bright colors or they're using checker patterns that don't look good on camera or they don't match the uh, uh, skin to uh, color or basically there's, there's a color mismatch that is kind of distracting. So try to use neutral colors and make sure that your clothes are uh, iron and they look professional, okay? Uh, another mistake I see with my students a lot too, is like they just put whatever they want that day and it's like, okay, well, uh, why are you using that color? It doesn't match. Uh, another mistake I see a lot when they're delivering their lectures is that their posture is not good. They're not standing straight. In my case, uh, I have a standing desk, which allows me a lot of flexibility when I'm teaching. So right now I'm standing. I like standing because it gives you more flexibility of move. It, it forces me to stand straight. And what I see is a lot of students uh, when they're delivering lectures is they're sitting and they're, they're either skewed or basically their posture is not good. And that's something you have to pay attention to also because for health reasons, you wanna make sure that you're standing straight. Um, <clears throat> okay, so this one is the, I would say is the number one mistake that I uh, notice uh, when students are recording themselves is that they don't look at the camera lens. They're looking at their, the image of themselves on the camera. So a lot of the, if you're shooting on a smartphone, you'll see yourself. If you're shooting on most uh, cameras, they have a flip screen. So what happens is that people, they tend to be, uh, uh, their eyes get attracted to looking at their se themselves to make sure they look good, but then that creates a disconnect because now it doesn't look like you're looking at your students. It, it looks like you're looking uh, from, uh, let me play this back. So here's the example of me looking away from the camera. That's me looking at the camera. I would say this is the number one mistake people do, like 100%, okay? And it takes uh, sometimes a little bit uh, time, you get used to that. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. Uh, I'm, you know, they're, Okay, so I'm relaxed and talking to a friendly in a friendly manner. <laughs> so let me to play this back. I actually can see whether you guys are seeing it. It's really cool. Let me see. So this is also a problem I see with people that are not used to teaching online in front of a camera. So I find there are two types of online teachers. The ones that used to teach in a traditional setting and they which is in a classroom, right? And they they're they're used to having that feedback, talking to real people in the real world. And then you have the other type of teacher, which is me. And I don't have that experience, but I'm very used to talking to the camera. What I find is that people are not used to talking to a camera. Once you put a camera in front of them, they start not feeling comfortable they, because it's a different way of communicating. So you have to practice to feel comfortable speaking to a camera, looking at the lens. And I know this is very unnatural, so the way you do that is by practicing. And one of the things I ask my students to do when they start teaching online is uh, before even they think about creating an, an online course, I ask them to record a uh, three to five minute video of themselves talking to the camera, looking at the lens and trying to 
talk in a friendly manner, imagining they're talking to their best friend until it feels natural. Because what I see is that a lot of professionals with 20 years of expertise that have been very successful teaching on traditional classroom environment. But when you put that camera in front of them, it looks like they forgot everything. And if, if they, they're, they're uptight, they're nervous, they, it doesn't seem natural. And I'm like, you have to get used to this until it flows naturally from you. And the only way you can do that is by practicing, right? Uh, one trick that I've uh, seen other students do is they play before they start recording, maybe they relax, they, they take a couple of deep breaths. Something that they will do as well is maybe get inspired by listening to relaxing music or by watching a couple of YouTube videos that put them in the right mood. And then, you know, they warm up their vocal cords and then they start delivering their, their lecture, right? Um, so I, I used to take for granted that speaking to a camera would be easier than to speaking to a, an, a real life audience. But it turns out that that was one of the number one issues that I saw uh, with first time with people that were creating their courses for the first time. It was like, it didn't feel natural and you wanna have that connection that feels natural, right? Okay, so okay, the next one is I'm relaxed and talking to a friendly manner, which is pretty much the same one. Oh, I gotta repeat it, okay. So let me see the next one. I have edited all mistakes. Okay, let me uh, play this back. You can see that. So here I'm just basically showing different examples of mistakes. I would think that most, so editing your mistakes is kind of like, a, of course, you can edit, edit out your mistakes, right? Uh, but what I notice when people are speaking is, and I still make that mistake, is that they use, and I, I think I have it on the next slide. Let me see. Yeah, I don't have, but it's here. So basically, this is what I mean here. Let me just, the main issue I see people as, as a mistake is that when they're speaking, they have a lot of, filler words. So when they don't know what to say, they say um or er. So what happens is you have to get used to not have, having those filler words. And it's very difficult because you do this unconsciously. The problem is that it makes you sound less confident. And I've heard this from people that are really professionals, uh, but you have to make the conscious effort that when you watch your video, scroll through it, and see how many times you repeat a word or how many times you say R and R. And sometimes you'll be uh, surprised at how many times you have used filler words. So at the beginning, what you can do is simply edit them out. You'll have like weird cuts, but at least you won't have the, these distracting sounds all the time happening, right? Uh, and then you see, I just said, ah, right? So I would cut that on video editing. If you Right, specifically now that I'm shooting for YouTube and people have very short attention spans, you wanna make sure that your uh, audio is super clear. Now, if you don't know what to say, uh, what I would do is try to just insert a silence and then you can cut the silence and then it will flow more natural when you're, uh, when you're playing back the video. Uh, so basically pay attention to how you deliver your lecture so it flows smoothly. All right, another thing, you see, it's good that it reminded me, I reminded myself of something. Do not forget to smile at least once per lesson. And I'm gonna tell you a little story here. Uh, so I've been, I've been recording maybe for eight years online lectures, and then I did a little exchange with a professional TV host. She said, if you help me create my online course, I'll give you some tips on how to become a better presenter. So then what she did, she's like, okay, Miguel, uh, give me, a five minute presentation and I'll give you some feedback. And I was like, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, and she's like, you know, you're very engaging, you're friendly, but you didn't smile once in the entire lesson. And I'm like, it's true. And she's like, it makes this biggest difference if when you're speaking, I'm not saying like laughing or anything, but it looks like you're happy and it kind of changed the entire tone of your presentation. I mean, of course, it depends on the subject, but you can, for almost any subject, you can always add a little bit of happiness to it. And the simplest way is to make sure that you smile. Not super fake, but you know, like, you know, you, this is not the end of the world. Let's just have fun. And just making that little tweak and being conscious about that make a huge difference, right? And like I say, by that time, I've been already teaching like for eight years online. 
And I never thought about that. It's like, sometimes I'm like so into it that I forget to smile. Uh, another thing that helps a lot is having bullet points of what you're going to uh, teach. So some people are really good. They can memorize the entire script because they have amazing memories. But most of us humans, mortals, they don't have perfect memory. So what you need to do before you start teaching online or recording your lecture is to rehear. That means it's more work, but it's going to ensure that your lecture is delivered uh, better, right? What you don't want to do is trying to figure out what you're saying in the middle of the lecture. So what happens is this is like acting. Just think that when you're in front of a camera, you're a little bit like of, of an actor. And what actors do before they have that final take is that they do several takes. And if you see a lot of professional online teachers and YouTubers, the part that you're not seeing is that they're spending sometimes an hour just practicing that lecture to make sure it comes out perfectly. Uh, so in my case, yeah, sometimes I don't like, you know, 10, 20 takes just to get that lecture delivered ideally in one take, which is very, very difficult. But an, a way to help you is to make sure that at least beside your camera or below the camera, you have a list of the bullet points that you want to ensure that they come across throughout your lecture. And there shouldn't be more than five points. If you're, if you're trying to address more than five points in one lecture, then probably you have to split it into two different uh, lessons, right? And another one talking about splitting lessons is get to the point and avoid ranting. It depends on what platform you are teaching because every platform has an ideal length of video. So YouTube, it's pretty good for videos that are between five and 10 minutes. If you're teaching online and this is inside a course hosting platform, then the videos could be longer. It could be between 10 and 20, up to 20 minutes, right? Although the idea length they say for online courses for a lecture is between also five and 10 minutes because that's just enough to deliver a lot of information, but do not, you don't overwhelm people. The key is that those five minutes have, be, have need to be used very efficiently. So you should stay on topic uh, while you're teaching because what I've seen a lot of people, they're very professional. They've been teaching for years, but they used to give one hour lectures and then they just put in front of the camera and they think it's the same world and things have changed. You have to understand in the online world, people have shorter attention spans. They want you to get to the point. All right, next one. Another thing I used to forget a lot and is that you should always be well hydrated. So make sure that you always have water near you because if you're recording for an entire day, like I've done sometimes for 10 hours straight, by the end of the day, you'll be, your voice will be destroyed. And also your cognitive abilities will decrease if you're not paying attention to everything that it matters, you know, like eating well and de definitely drinking. And then we have, make sure you keep a positive attitude. Always remember that even, so this is one of the issues with recording online courses. It can get extremely tedious, right? Because basically you're making a movie, you're doing many takes, you're making many mistakes, you have to deal with the technology and it can get extremely frustrating. And the problem that I've seen sometimes is that you look at me at the beginning of the course and I'm very happy and then by the end, I'm very flustered and it looks like I'm angry because I'm so tired of recording the, the, the course. And I'm like, come on, I want this to be over, right? So important to take breaks and to make sure that your energy levels are always uh, positive. Another thing that uh, is true is that your energy levels, when they come to the camera, they're not as high as in person, which means in order for you to look like you're excited, you, you have to be a little more excited than you would be in the real world. So the camera picks up your level of excitement. Uh, this is not 100% necessary, but I've seen it. Like, it almost seems like if you are, you're going over the top, but really when you look at yourself, it's like, hmm, it doesn't look like I was that excited, but I thought I was excited. Well, because the camera doesn't pick up that excitement as much as the real world. And the final tip of the day, the 39th tip is always know your why. Why are you doing this? And why are you teaching? Why are you creating this lesson? If you're specifically creating an online course, have that in mind because if it's a big course, I have done courses with, you know, like 10, 15 hours long, it's very easy to get discouraged if, if you don't know exactly why are you doing this? How are you going to impact people's life? 
what, what is the main purpose why you're uh, teaching online? Why are you going through all this effort? And that oh, it's always true for anything in life, but also when you're recording courses online. All right, and that's it. So those are the 39 uh, tips. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. The link for the checklist is this one. I don't know if I can paste it on the chat, but basically you have the 39 tips on a checklist that you can use before you record a lecture. So I'm gonna put it here on the chat. Send. Mm -hmm. oh, I, mm -hmm. oh, no, no, let me, can you see the link? Let me uh, fix it really quickly. Oops, just a moment. Okay. I think now it's visible for ev to everybody. Okay, yeah, so if you click there, you should be able to see a Google form with all the recommendations that I just shared. And <clears throat> something that I, uh, I will recommend is just click on them, making sure that you're meeting all these criteria. And if you meet all these criteria, it's almost impossible for your video not to be awesome. All right. Mm -hmm. Perfect, thank you so much. And we are gonna be starting the Q&A right now, but before we okay. do that, I know that some of you folks need to run and I would like to ask you to fill out a quick survey that's gonna pop up right as you get off of this session. Uh, so please let us know how you liked it so that we can provide better content to you in the future. And at this point, let's start with the very first question. I think we can dedicate maybe a good 15 minutes, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start from the first one from Daniel. Does our computer shoot in uh, 16 by nine frame? 16 by nine, okay. So if you're talking about the, the webcam inside your computer, then by default, most computers will shoot in 16 by nine, but they also have a setting to, to change it sometimes. You wanna make sure that the setting is a 16 by nine, and it's very easy to do it because there's really only two formats, four by three and 16 by nine. So it looks, if it looks more like a square, that's wrong. You wanna make sure it looks wider. And by default, if it's wider, it's probably 16 by nine. But it's a, sometimes it's a setting. I, I, the answer is by default, usually all computers shoot in 16 by nine, yeah. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Let's move on to the next one. Um, what about the computer camera versus an external camera? What's your opinion? Definitely would use an external camera. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen, even in the high-end computers, still today for some reason, computer cameras are low resolution and they look like crap, basically. So even in my case right now, I'm using a, an external webcam and it's a high-definition webcam. It's called the Logitech C. Uh, 920 but anyways if you go to amazon and you type high definition webcam any of the top webcams are going to be way better than any computer camera awesome thank you so much uh, a question from sam what if you are adding a smartphone app not in 16 by 9 should i keep it in 16 by 9 so i can add text on the slide so if you're adding a smartphone app, not I'm not sure if you mean you're recording a smartphone app. Because uh, yeah, if, if I'm gonna assume you wanna record the screen of your your phone, which is an app, and by of course that is in, in vertical mode. So what I would do is I would keep the video always in 16 by nine because you wanna make sure that whatever you're uploaded is optimized for that platform. So if you're uploading it to a course hosting platform or to YouTube, the best format is 16 by nine. Now you can record your screen of your or phone uh, in, in vertical mode, right? And you can put that on one side of the screen. And on the other side, you can have text or you can have your face. Or if you're not gonna have text or images uh, or your face beside the recording of your smartphone app, you can put it in the middle and make sure you feel the, the surroundings not with just black it doesn't doesn't look good you can have a a, a trick that they use a lot for people that upload instagram videos on youtube is that they have the same image but they have it blurred and darker on the background uh, i don't know if i have an example basically the answer is 
have whatever you do, make sure that the end video is a 16 by nine. Now what you do inside could be in other formats, but the final video should be in 16 by nine. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your answer. Um, so Stefan is asking, should you be looking straight into the camera? Uh, yes, you have to look not at the, when we're talking about the camera, we're talking about the camera lens. So uh, the, the basically the little circle where the image is being recorded in the camera, you wanna make sure you look at it, right? Mm -hmm. And that, mm -hmm. that will give the appearance that you're talking to your students directly uh, looking at their eyes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so do you have any tips when there are two cameras and you are asked to shift between the two every now and then? So I guess maybe how often you need to do that. So there is, that's unusual, but that would be more in a professional recording studio where you have two different cameras. At that stage, usually you have somebody that is switching cameras for you, and it depends on what the director, I mean, if you're the director, you could decide, but uh, traditionally you will look only just at one camera all the time, and they can use the second camera just to create a different perspective. Uh, which I've seen a lot uh, doing professional online courses, if, like for example, in masterclass.com, which is one of the top places for professional online courses shot by, you know, where the, the, the teachers are very famous people like Martin Scorsese or Serena Williams, people are very, they always shoot with two cameras, but they always only look at the main camera and then they have a second one just to create more, uh, make it more interesting, right? And that doesn't mean that, if you want, you could always look at the second camera, uh, but traditionally, most people, in most of, when you have a two camera setting, they always just, you always look at one camera. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for clarifying that. And uh, Robert's asking, will this session recording be available? Yes, absolutely. I will be sending uh, a link to everybody who registered as well as who attended today's session. And as I forecasted this types of question, Miguel, could you please give any recommendations on the starter, starter kit for microphone and the camera? Yes. So actually what I'm going to do I have a list of all the equipment that I use personally, which is the kind of like the standard one. And I'm gonna put it on the on the chat here. Uh, and then you'll see all the equipment that I use. I'll just send it. I don't know if people can see, you probably have to share it with everybody. But basically, in terms of equipment, it changes all the time. So every year you'll have different cameras, right? So um, in my case, what I'm using right now for the for the webcam, if you're gonna start, it depends on your budget, right? But if you're gonna start uh, with something simple, I would use the Logitech Logitech C920 for the webcam. Okay, and I would use the as the microphone. The most typical one is, is called the Blue Yeti for the microphone. And that's a USB microphone that you can connect directly to your computer and it sounds very, very professional, right? And so th that, those two take care of your video and audio. And with that, you can record 99% of courses like they're gonna look very, very professional, okay? Now, in terms of getting to the next step, with a camera that has detachable lenses and it's more professional, that changes a lot. Uh, but the one I'm using right now and is very good is called the Sony A6600, right? Uh, that's the most, it's a really good uh, camera. It shoots in 4K, so a really high resolution. You can, mm, you can even shoot in slow motion if you want to. And it's not too difficult to use. You can connect it directly to the computer. Um, yeah. So that, and that, it costs about $1,000 and then the lenses can get more expensive. But that's something that, that can help you start. Basically, if you buy any camera for between $1,000 and $2,000 that is not 
older than six months, you're going to get everything you would ever need at this stage. Before it would cost a lot more money to get this level of quality, like shooting in 4K with detachable lenses would be like, you know, sometimes up to five, ten thousand dollars. But literally in the last two or three years, any camera over a thousand dollars is going to be all you need. But there's a two, that's one recommendation for you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and it looks like um, our attendees really liked your tips. So let's cover some more questions, a few questions. Um, so Steven uh, needs for pop filter on microphone. What about using a gaming headset? Where to place the mic? Okay. So yes, I, I don't know if you guys can see my, I might, re oh, sorry, I'm, I'm still uh, showing my screen. Let me just stop sharing my screen. I don't know how I'm going to stop sharing the screen. Okay. You can see, mm -hmm. you can see me guys, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is my uh, setup. I have a shotgun microphone and I do have a pop, pop filter, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends how far you are from the microphone. So if you're like, this far, you probably don't need the pop filter. But if I'm recording voiceover audio and I'm less than six inches from the from the microphone, I make sure I have a pop filter to basically get rid of all the plosive sounds like P's and D's and all of that, right? So it's a, they cost like $10 and it's, it's a good recommendation. Now, if you're using a headset, I would recommend that you don't use a headset <laughs> because the problem with headsets is that their microphones are not really good and they're always really close to your mouth. So they're great to, for gaming, but they're not good for recording professional lectures. But first of all, it's going to be in front of your face. And second, it's very hard to position it in a way that they're not going to get the air blowing directly to them. And if you don't have them directly in front of your face, they, doesn't, they usually don't sound good. They sound too, basically they're not designed for recording professional audio, right? Uh, so my recommendation is if you want to record professional lectures, don't use a headset. Uh, if you want to just have Zoom calls and stuff like that, it's fine. Uh, but it depends. Uh, I would stay away from that, really. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much. So let's um, let's cover another question. I think it's a great one. Um, how about present with slides? I have to look at the screen rather than camera. What do you suggest? Okay. So. That's a great question because all my courses I use, uh, I'm actually recording myself and the screen with the slides at the same time. So it takes a little bit of practice, uh, but this is a trick. Make sure that the slides are as close as the camera as possible. And you're just gonna glance to the slides uh, so often, right? So don't be looking at the slides all the time, focus on looking at the camera and then maybe in between sentences, you can glance one like a little bit down, so it doesn't look too unnatural, and that'll give you enough time to know what you're going to talk about, and then look at the camera. And this is why rehearsing is so important, right? You do this two or three times before you record yourself, so you know what you're going to say, so you don't have to be looking at the screen all the time, right? So again, make sure that the, the slides are close to the camera, right? and that you're just glancing and that you free hears and then you'll be good to go. Mm -hmm, perfect. And uh, Miguel, do you suggest standing in front of the camera or sitting is also acceptable? Both are completely acceptable. I think most of my courses are sitting now, uh, mm -hmm. but like I say, it depends. You know, if you want to have more room, you know, if, you, if for some reason you have to show your body, uh, you can see I can stand really back. You can see everything. You can see I'm wearing my pajamas too, which is great. Uh, but like, uh, yeah, it depends. It also depends. Let, let's say that you are used to teaching standing up in a classroom. Well, then get a standing desk like I have right now that, you know, you can buy them. I mean, they're a little more expensive than traditional desk, but it's also good for you to have a standing desk, I think, for health reasons, not to be sitting up there all the time. Uh, but yeah, both work well either or yeah mm -hmm. perfect and let's cover the last question and then wrap up our session what is the typical attention span that you can expect okay so this depends on the platform 
that you're teaching because now you can teach in so many platforms. I mean, you could even teach on Instagram, right? So Instagram mm -hmm. allows you videos up to one minute. So that means that in 60 seconds, whatever you're saying has to be uh, really engaging to the point, provide value, etc. right? If you're teaching on YouTube, usually five to 10 minutes is the maximum, right? Uh, but it's not just about the attention overall attention span is for example if you're on youtube the first five to ten seconds are critical if you want to have people to keep watching the video right because they have not committed to you as an if somebody has paid for your online course well you know you have them captive at least for most of the course because they they paid money to watch you so you don't have to be like in the first five seconds of every lecture just making sure you catch attention right uh, so that's it. make sure that you understand what is the platform that you are going to publish your course and what are the rules of engagement there. So on YouTube, definitely the first five to 10 seconds have to be very engaging. If you're teaching on an online platform where people have already paid you, then you have more time because people are expecting you to sit down and, and be more thorough and detailed. And uh, that's it. Just basically, it depends on the platform. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much for these recommendations. And I think we are ready to wrap up the session. Um, thank you very much, Miguel. <laughs> it's been a, a great hour, very um, full of great, uh, great advice. And I would like to thank all of our attendees for coming today and being so active with all your questions. And I wish everyone a wonderful day and I will see you at the next webinar. Bye, everybody. And bye, Miguel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.